There is no question whether you will face adversity and get knocked down. The only question is, will you get back up once life hits you with its deadly punch? Coach Winston Bennett has been knocked down before and provides a proactive and detailed description of what it takes to master life's unforeseen challenges in Fight for Your Life, available at tatepublishing.com. didn't realize and I'm not gonna stay up here I'm gonna come down here because when I'm up here I'm so tall I do want to go to heaven don't get me wrong I do but it kind of feels like my head's already sticking there when I'm up on podiums I'm already there and that's a good place to be it's the place you want to be but I am so happy to be here uh, I want to thank you guys uh, for allowing me and my wife uh, to come anytime I'm able to get out in public and, and touch the hands of people who I find a lot of times supported me when I played. You know, oftentimes, Rupp Arena only seats 24,000. I mean, you know, you can't get into place. It's only 24,000. What does the young center seat? Anybody know? Less than that, exactly. Less than that. And it's going to always be that way. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> See, Teresa doesn't like that. She's a huge Cards fan. And I had to make sure, see, you just ate a wonderful dinner, and I got to keep you awake. That's one of, my, that's one of the things I'm, I'm here to do. As I was thinking about this, and of course, before I go on, you know, someone mentioned to me, well, we reserved a spot for your children. And my children, at least two of them, were here in the hotel. I'm out getting dinner, and one of the gentlemen out there said, uh, there was a couple of girls, or at least one girl, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, you might ought to recruit her. It was my daughter. <laughs> yeah, it was my daughter. I, I hear that a lot. But the funny thing is, I can't get her to pick up a basketball. Can't do it. She loves volleyball. One of the things I said, if me and the golden goose are golden eagle, as I call her, that's this young lady up here, my wife, isn't she eagle-less? She's looking beautiful. <laughs> looking beautiful. Thank you. One of the things I vowed if I had children was that I wouldn't force them to play the game of basketball just because I played. And that's so easy to do when you're a parent and you've had some modicum of success in what you do. It's easy to kind of maneuver your kids into doing what you did. But I found that it, it, that just doesn't work too well if it's not their passion. And my, my middle daughter, Jasmine, the 6'2", you know, she kind of has latched a hold of volleyball, so I'm very proud of that. I noticed something when I checked in the room. I had to write some notes out, and I, I looked at or, or glimpsed at a little pad on the desk. I'm sure you have one in your room, too. I'm wondering if anybody noticed what the little pad said at the top. Be creative, someone said. Be creative. Anybody else notice anything different? All right, let me tell you what my little pad said with the Holiday Inn insignia on it. It said two simple words, but two words that a lot of times we forget when we get mixed up or involved in what we do. The two words said, stay thoughtful. Stay thoughtful. This is stack, right? Stack, right? OK. Um, I did get my degree from Kentucky in business and decided to go back to get another degree, a master's degree in business and in a degree program, another master's now in theology. Now, that's not said to impress you, but it's to, to tell you how stupid I am. 
because it takes a lot of time to do all that. I've got a wife, I got three daughters, I got a granddaughter, I got a dad that lives in my house, I got uh, 30 basketball players, 15 on the varsity, 15 on the JV, that I'm responsible for. Stay thoughtful. I thought about STACK, and I would like to take a moment just to use STACK as an acronym. Obviously, something must have told me when I looked down and saw the little pad that, say, that said, stay thoughtful, obviously that was the S, stay thoughtful. When I look at what you do and the importance of what you do, I was out walking around the hotel last night. And generally, as I walk, thoughts come to my mind. And the thought that came to my mind about this particular conference was, I'm in the midst of dream drivers. I'm in the midst of dream drivers. Stack, st Student Transportation Association of Kentucky. I saw an insignia out there that said, lead the way through safety for our children in Kentucky, or something along the line. Lead the way is what really stuck out, and safety really stuck out. A lot of times, in what you do as directors, as mechanics, as drivers, and here's the point I'm getting to, those drivers in those gold limousines, what are they called? This is not a trick question, guys. <laughs> OK, I just called a bus a limousine. OK? What is, what's the driver? What, what is he called? Chauffeur. chauffeur. Notice I didn't say bus driver. But I would like to use the term dream driver. Dream drivers. The mechanics are dream builders. The training directors are part of that dream building process. Those secretaries are dream assistants. You notice where I'm going? The terminology we use can really uplift a person. Let me, let me show you what I mean. I was in IHOP last night before I walked before I walked. I should have walked, then I would have thought secondly about the IHOP deal. Because I had to walk because I ate too many pancakes before I walked. So I was in IHOP, a server comes over to our table, and he brings us the menus. And I said, thank you, sir. Young fella, probably in his mid-20s, and he says, uh, what would you like to order? And I stopped him right there. I said, young man, answer me a question, if you will. What is your dream or your, give me one grandiose goal that you have. Is it to serve pancakes? Is it to give us orange juice and water? Because if it is, that's a great goal if that's what you ultimately want to do. And I begin to see this metamorphosis when I asked him what he really wanted to do. And after I asked him that, I couldn't stop him from talking. He went on this rampage. Well, here's what I like to do, sir. I'd like to start my own heating and air conditioning company. I'd like to go to Ivy Tech. This would be my ultimate dream of what I would want to do. And I said, are you working toward that dream, young man? The young man's name is Mike. The name of his heating and air conditioning company is going to be Mike MD Heating and Air. I said, Mike, I see that for you. If you see that, I see that for you. So I said, what are you doing here at IHOP? He says, I'm feeding my dream. I'm making the money so that I can go to Ivy Tech so that I can study to be the, uh, the, the heating and air conditioning guy. See, he first told me, I want to go work in a heating and air conditioning company. And I said, that's good, Mike, because most of us learn under someone before we take over the business. Yeah. I said, have you ever heard of a guy named Warren Buffett, Mike? No, no, I never heard of him. I said, Mike, that's the second richest man in America, possibly. Him and, him and uh, uh, Gates switch, go back and forth. And I said, do you know Buffett didn't start out owning Berkshire Hathaway, but, you know, he, he, he went around, knocked on every door, gathered $100,000, 
and wanted everybody to believe that he was a great investor. So he started putting their money to work. And as he put their money to work, it started to grow. People started believing him. Then he started to own his own, own company. But the guy who mentored him was a guy named Benjamin Graham. You see, we all have mentors. Even when we talk about transportation, and believe it or not, what I just told you was about dream drivers. Dream drivers may not necessarily be behind the wheel of the dream limousine. Dream drivers may be the mechanic in the mechanic shop that's building the dream to allow the dream drivers to drive the dreamers. We don't look at it that way. We don't look at it that way. So the S is for what? Stay thoughtful. What's that next letter in stack? T? How many watch the NBA Finals? Any basketball fans in here? A few. All right, let me ask a better question. How many watched the Wildcats win the 2012 championship? All right, all right, all right, let me use that example. But, but, but before I do, before I do, can you work with me on something? Because I know you just ate. You feel probably like I did last night after I got finished at IHOP, after I ate three to five pancakes and T-bone steak and three eggs over easy. And Well, I'll leave it at that. Um, <clears throat> But work with me on this. Let me see, because you are the dream drivers. That means, and I saw it on the sign, that you lead. It said, lead the way. So obviously, you are leaders in here. So when you see something that you recognize, obviously, you didn't recognize LeBron James and the Miami Heat, but you did the Kentucky Wildcats. So I'm just going to take a moment, get off key a little bit, go on a tangent. Are you ready? Say yes. yes. OK. What is this? Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? You said you was going to go with me. Most of you raise your hands because the cats want it. If you see something you know, go with me on it. All right, that's better. You should be loose. I had to get the cobwebs out. You should be loose now. Dream drivers. Dream drivers. I talked to Coach Calipari. This was before they won the championship. And I said, Coach, what's the goal of what you're doing? Because you're doing a fabulous job. You get in these number one recruiting classes year after year. You know, I like to know that formula because I could take it to mid-continent and do something really big if you'd give me that formula. But, you know, I also said, you know, Coach, we're getting a lot of flack at Kentucky because we hadn't won the championship in a while. What are you going to do about that? And he didn't take a moment's hesitation and said, how about a 2012 championship? And I was aghast. Are you serious, coach? This is before the season. A 2012 championship? Are you serious? You got that type of talent? You got that type of synergy on your team that you could win it in 2012? A 2012 championship. So as the season went along, those guys were going undefeated. I think they what, got beat by Vanderbilt. Got beat by Vanderbilt in the tournament. And, and you know what? It didn't even act like he cared about the tournament, really. If you heard the interviews, it didn't even act like he wanted to win it, like they needed a loss or something. I never think in terms of losing, but he acted like it was OK. I saw what he was doing. He was looking at the big picture. He knew that a loss during that time would humble Anthony Davis and Gil Crest and Teague and all those guys, Lamb, and they would listen a little bit better. In other words, he could be the dream driver a little bit better if the people that he had in the seats would listen. How many of you, if you had those buses, or if you're directing those trainers, if they listen, it'd be a little better, wouldn't it? There was a book called Good to Great where the author wrote, if we get the correct people in the right seats, the bus rides smoother. You could probably say that too. If we could get some of those hoodlums from sitting in the back and move them up front where I could get a hand on them, the bus would ride a little smoother. <laughs> Before I even knew that I was going to speak here, I saw something on the news. Lady was on a bus, called a bus monitor. A kid's messing with her, playing with her ear. <laughs> hey, don't hit me, man. I, 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 this is just a demonstration. But I started to really appreciate what you guys go through when you talk about leading a group of young people in transportation. 
Remember, don't let anybody minimize what you do. What you do is the most important thing that could ever be. Let me tell you why. When I thought and heard that I had to speak here, I began to think about Mr. Stevens, who drove our bus, drove my bus from first, now we called it back the bus, but you know what it is, don't you? It's the gold limousine. It's the dream limousine. Drove the bus from first to sixth grade. He was the only bus driver I had. Mr. Grant from sixth to eighth grade was the only limousine driver I had. And then when I went into ninth to 11th, because I got a car in the 12th, because I had worked, uh, had a, a hoopty, we call it. It wasn't a real car. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, the dream driver drove me to my dreams. It was the, and here's what he taught me. The dream driver, I noticed, taught me punctuality. Because at 6.30 a.m., he was already outside my house waiting on me. Another thing he taught me. The dream driver taught me that if I wasn't punctual, I was going to get left. And that happened a few times, too. <laughs> if at 6.35, if at 6.30 I wasn't there, at 6.35 the dream driver was gone and my dream had passed me by. I noticed something else. At the end of the day, I saw the dream driver again. You see, the dream drivers I had, I was lucky. The dream drivers I had was so encouraging. Here's what they would do. I would step on the bus in the morning, half sleep, pants outside my trousers. The dream driver would say, hey, man, you need, hey boy, you need to get them pants in, the, in, in, in them shorts. I'd forget to put my belt on so my slacks would go down a little bit. Now they wear them down there naturally. But back then it was a mistake for me, believe me. I had a mom and dad. We had the, the fork and the spoon on the wall in the kitchen. So it was a mistake when I did it. Because I knew what was waiting if I did it, you know, every day. But I would jump on the bus. He noticed I didn't have my, or she, they noticed that I didn't have my belt on. And Mr. Stevens would say, hey, son, where's your belt this morning? I would try to carouse and sneak my way to the back. Mom already told me, boy, you better be up front. And I was six, seven, seemed like then. About six years old, getting on the bus, no leg room. I'm trying to sneak in the back, because in the back, you know, that's where kids start to act crazy and be fanatical and talk all crazy and pull the girl's uh, uh, hair. They would pull hair. No, I won't do that to you. So I did that a few times. And Mr. Stevens said, you know, he had this mirror that he could always look in and seem like he was right there in the back with you. <laughs> hey, Bennett, what you doing, son? Leave that girl's hair alone. Matter of fact, get up here by me. The dream driver did that. Every once in a while, the windows would be open. Stick our hands out in the window. We're going to wave at our friends. Mr. Stevens, boy, if you don't get that arm back in that window, I'm going to pull that window up on your arm. You better get out there and sit down. <laughs> I'm talking about the dream drivers. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. I saw that in my lifetime. It wasn't just dependent on my mother and father. The dream driver was there morning and noon. Not only was he corrective, but the people who drove me to my dreams on the gold limousine, he would also say this, son, you're going to be something one day. I can see it. I can see the way you act. You're going to be something one day. Keep your nose clean. Keep doing right. And I made some mistakes, obviously. But overall, the dream, the dream driver helped me to get where I am. Let's take a look at my past and my history, the positive side. I, <laughs> the dream driver drove me to a place called Mill High School that used to be on Brook and Breck right here in downtown Louisville, Lisa. I mean, Teresa, right here. I love it. I love you because it's people like you that has allowed me to be in places like this all over the nation having an opportunity to speak because you told me I could be something. I'm not talking about the teachers. I'm talking about the dream drivers. I'm talking about the dream builders that's in the mechanic shop. I'm talking about the dispatchers that got on the radio and say, hey, no, you need to make a left here. We're going to be a little late for school because we got, we got a, a snowstorm coming. 
that was, I, I don't even, re, even remember the time the dream driver was late. I remember times that there was early morning rainstorms and ice storms where the dream driver had to maneuver the bus on ice. And he maneuvered that thing. And I believe he did it because he knew he was the incubator of a lot of dreams on that bus. He knew that there was heads of companies on that bus at six or seven years old. He knew that there was potential other dream drivers on that bus, and he wanted to protect the dream. He knew, he, he saw, even when we couldn't see ourselves, that there was lawyers and doctors on the bus. I got to protect them. They may just be the ones that bring my grandchild in the world. The dream driver drove me to Mill High School and gave me an opportunity. Then the dream driver drove me to the University of Kentucky and gave me an opportunity. Then the ultimate dream, my father told me at six years old these words. He said, Winston, Kentucky be playing on TV and, or the University of Louisville. Because back when I was six, seven, eight years old, University of Louisville had a guy named Dr. Duncan Stein. If you drive down to Watterson, you'll see him on one of those buildings. He was an idol to me. Because if you grow up in Louisville, a little minority kid like I was, I didn't know Michael Jordan. There was no Michael Jordan then. The closest thing was Dr. J, and he wasn't from Louisville. But a guy named Daryl Griffith was. I remember watching Channel 3 News one night as a youngster in Griffith's in Mill High School's gym doing a 360 dunk. I said, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could jump that high. This guy was unbelievable. And at six years old, I set my sights that I wanted to be like Daryl Duncan Stein Griffin. I didn't turn out to be him. I didn't have the 48-inch vertical. I wasn't in Bell Knight, Bell Knapp Gym, the old Bell Knapp Gym, shooting over volleyball poles from seemingly half court, working on my three-point shot like he did. But I was shooting in the garbage can, pretending to be him. I was shooting on the Nerf basketball hoop, doing a 360 dunk, pretending to be him. My father would sit me on the side of the bed and roll up two socks and pretend there was a ball. He'd lay in the bed and our, our wall was about seven foot, or at least it seemed, with about an eight inch space in between, and he'd just shoot the socks over the door. I had one job to do, be like Anthony Davis. and block the socks. <laughs> How successful was I in the beginning jumping up blocking socks, you think? You think I was a big hit? You think I was blocking them like big AD? What's the kid at Louisville, the center that blocks all them shots? The African kid, anybody know him? That's right, there's no Louisville fans in here, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, she knows I love her. I was horrible. Generally, when you start out doing something, you are horrible. I heard one of the guys up here say, you know, there's guys and, and young ladies that's been through their training, but they're a little nervous. Well, when you start out doing something, you got need to be nervous, because you've never done it before. And until you get some time, somebody said it takes 30 years to become an overnight success. <laughs> Meaning that there's no such thing. Rome wasn't built in a day, we always say. 30 years, that's about what it took me, playing in the NBA, it seemed. But the dream driver drove me there. Here's what I want to get to. After all those years of dream drivers driving me, I finally get to where I wanted to go. My father at six said that Winston, he set me on the side of the bed, we'd be watching Louisville or Kentucky play on TV, and he'd always pose this question, Winston, can you see yourself being there one day? Not once, not twice, every single time a game came on, he posed the question, can you see yourself being there? Now my mother would pose the same question, a little differently. She said, I, uh, uh, honey, I don't think he can. <laughs> not until he learns to read and write and do arithmetic. <laughs> my mother was a bear now, I'm gonna tell you. 
But that's why, that's why I've pursued education. See, I was one of the lucky ones. I was one of the lucky ones who had mom and dad in his life. Today, not many kids have that. I'm the head coach at Mid-Continent University. I'm also a dream driver. But I'm driving kids like you, oftentimes, who don't live in the best of homes, who don't live in the best of neighborhoods. I see where they live because I have to go and recruit them. I had one kid on my team. We were playing Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. And we always stop at like a Golden Corral or someplace, Orion's, where we can get a big bang for our buck. Because I got 15 guys on the varsity, and those cats eat. They eat big. OK? So I'm sitting there, and it came to me, why don't you go around the room and ask each kid where they came from to get to where they are. And it was the most eye-opening thing I have ever done in my life. Because when I did that, one of my kids got up and said, Coach Bennett, you're the first man that's ever been in my life. Coach Bennett, my mom would leave in the morning me and my five brothers and sisters wouldn't see her the three, four, five days after, and I had to be the mom and dad to my brothers and sisters. Coach Bennett, this is my only opportunity to change the family tree for my whole family. There's a lot of you out in that audience are picking up those same kids every morning. You are the dream driver for these kids. I had hoped my daughters could be here because I wanted you to see the impact that you have on a little life. My one daughter wouldn't be 6'2 if you hadn't drove that bus with safety and protection. She wouldn't be playing volleyball right now if you wasn't focused and on your A's, B's, and T's and I's when you drive that bus. She wouldn't be on that bus mechanic if you hadn't been doing the inspection and directors and trainers, if you hadn't took the time to train the drivers to be the best that they can be. Because as you know, all it takes is one opportunity, one time falling asleep, one time not being focused, and then 44 dreams die. Or 66, or how many ever goes on those buses? They die. When I was mentioned about speaking here, my mind immediately went to the Carrollton crash and the dreams that died on that bus. I did not know until someone told me up, up there that was the impetus for a lot of changes on buses. More than one emergency exit and a lot of other changes that you guys have made and implemented. Why? I want you to look at the most important thing on the face of the earth. Can you see each other? Do you know how you got here? Some dream driver allowed you to be here that drove you from first to six and six to eight and eight to 12. Some dream driver protected your dream by allowing you and helping you to continue to live. Some dream driver stood in the gap when we didn't have the best of families to cause us to live our dream. Because the dream drivers drove me, I was a third round pick, 64th pick, back in the time when they had more than two rounds in the NBA draft, 1989. I give credit to the dream drivers. I haven't forgot what I said in stock. The S is for what? You remember? What was it? Stay strong, stay thoughtful, stay thoughtful, stay thoughtful. What was the T? Did I say the T? Team work. Team work. The one thing Kentucky had this year was team work. Anthony Davis majored in shot blocks. He did not try to be the point guard in every game. Now, there were some games he did try to bring the ball down and make the pass because he could do that. He's that great of an athlete. Peyton Siva, Teresa didn't try to be everything, but he was the most important thing. He was the captain of the ship. You guys are the captain of the ship. Let no one lessen the fact that you're the greatest people on the face of this earth because you are impacting dreams. 
you can do no more than allow a young person to have the ability to live out their dream. I'm here before you today because you dream drivers, you mechanics dream builders, you trainers, you dream instructors, you secretary assistants of dreams, I'm here today because of you. You are the dream drivers. Thank you very much. Thank you.